Guys, so I'm going to be vulnerable with y'all again, and I'm going to share a struggle that I have had in my life. Not anymore, thank God. God is good. But he gave me an analogy. Of course, y'all already know that I do analogies if you watch me. Um, to explain simply how to overcome lust. Lust can grip you for years and years and years. And so I want to take us back to Jesus's ministry, the, before Jesus's ministry. So the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And he fasted, no food or water. And the devil came at him with so many different temptations, with pride, with vanity, with fame, with fortune, power, because Jesus calls him the God of this world. And he was offering the things of the world. And each time that he was tempted, Jesus didn't put up his hands and say, all right, I'm gonna clock you. He wasn't like, I'm gonna throw hands, like, you know, cause I'm from Miami, so people say like, you know, you know, throw, I can throw hands, like, you know, acting all tough. Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus understood that the battlefield is in the mind. And he understood that he needs to warfare with spiritual weapons, unseen weapons. In a battle, you need a sword. If, if your opponent has a sword and you don't have a sword, baby, you're gonna, you're gonna lose. It's just gonna happen. So, so Jesus would pull out the sword of the spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 11, that we need to put on the full armor of God because we're in a battle every day to do the right and to the wrong and every little decision matters. We have a spiritual world around us that we can't see. And so in the full armor of God, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And so when the lie comes to you, if you know the truth already, you can identify that lie and you won't fall for it. But if you don't know the truth and your mind isn't filled with the truth, that lie will come and you're, you're susceptible to fall to it. And that's why we need to read the word of God because it will aid us in our spiritual warfare against the enemy and the enemy is the father of lies. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a visual, I'm gonna try. So this is Becky and uh, Becky is struggling with lust and temptation. She's struggling with pornography and um, here Becky is bored, right? One of the things, you know, it, that people with lust problems, they're either bored or, you know, whatever. And she gets this thought to watch pornography or to go have sex with somebody, to, to hit them up on, on the phone. And the thought is the snake. The thought the temptation comes and, it, and it's kind of far off. It's just a far off idea. Oh, you should do this, right? And if she entertains it, this is what happens. It comes closer, it comes and slithers in her ear and the temptation becomes even more powerful. And if she continues to entertain it, it comes into her ear, into her brain and wraps around her brain, constricts it. And now it has control over her body and it leads to sin. So what happens? The Bible says, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, to make it obedient to Christ. Take every thought captive. And so when it's a far off, what you need to do is you need to cut it off like this, cut it off at the head. Not when it's here, right here. Cut it off at the head. And how do you do that? This is what God showed me. He said, quote my scripture, he said, say I take that thought captive in Jesus name and then you say a short prayer God help me right and that's how you cut, cut that snake off at the head a few more tips I'm gonna give you close those doors some people 
and I've been, you know, a victim to this, following guys that have their shirt off or whatever, and, and guys, you know, following girls that have bikinis and all that stuff, those are open doors to the enemy. Shut those doors. Watching movies, listening to music that desensitizes you to sin, um, to adultery, to sex before marriage, all of those things. There's a reason why they call it entertainment because it enters your eyes and the eyes are the windows to the soul. It comes into your heart and the, God says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it comes the issues of your life. How does, what are the gateways to the heart? The eyes, the ears, the mouth, what you say, it can defile your heart. It can defile you. So this is a lot to take in. But use scripture, pick up your sword because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Don't let anybody or the devil make you feel like you're stuck in a sin because through Jesus Christ, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And God is not giving up on you. Don't stay in that condemnation. What you did yesterday, it's history. It's in the past. Today's a new day. And God's mercies for you are brand new every morning. You can do this.